Super Mario Odyssey has sold over 14 million units, making it one of the Nintendo Switch's best-selling games. Although Super Mario Odyssey has fun kingdoms to explore and cool costumes to obtain and many secrets to behold, there is still so much more to Super Mario Odyssey that has yet to be discovered. In this video, I will be looking back at one of the Nintendo Switch's greatest titles, Super Mario Odyssey. But to get a full review, we have to go to the beginning. The very beginning. Some of the earliest design concepts for Super Mario Odyssey can be traced all the way back to the year 2013, preceding the launch of Super Mario 3D World for the Nintendo Wii U, Super Mario Odyssey not officially officially began production. Shigeru Miyamoto and the rest of the Mario Odyssey development team wanted something a little bit different for Super Mario Odyssey. The team experimented with tons of different ideas and concepts. For example, they found that by throwing your hat was a pleasing action to utilize with the Joy-Con controller, therefore implementing that same mechanic into Super Mario Odyssey. The constant brainstorm led to the team to get more creative for certain world ideas for Odyssey, meaning large sandboxy type environments, which eventually would lead to the kingdoms that we see featured in Super Mario Odyssey. Mario Odyssey's concept design focused more on the non-linear type levels that are featured in past Mario games, such as Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 for example. The developers wanted to give the player more of a choice when it comes to certain objectives, such as a power move mission or a certain side quest. And I honestly think that the developers executed this tactic extremely well. For example, the Metro Kingdom in many's eyes is the most favored in all of the game. It was a kingdom that obviously takes its inspiration from New York City. The reason people love the Metro Kingdom so much is because the developers tried something new, meaning that they went out of their comfort zone. Instead of your usual grass, desert, ice, and lava worlds, Super Mario Odyssey features the Cascade Kingdom, a beautiful one just to run around and practice practicing moves that Mario utilizes. The Sand Kingdom, which in retrospect, yes, is a certain desert level, but it's home to the most power moons featured in the entire game, 89, and is one of, or the biggest in the whole game. The Wooded Kingdom, when you immediately enter inside of this kingdom, that epic music starts playing and you know that you're in for a treat. This kingdom features some cool and interesting ideas for captures, such as a tank and the stretchy Goomba thingies. The Lake Kingdom. I mean, who doesn't like this one? Just hearing that soft, calm, peaceful music brings a calm sooth to my mind. And this kingdom also features some capture ideas, like certain NPCs and Cheap Cheap, which, in my opinion, always seemed like a no-brainer for a capture in the first place. The Cloud Kingdom. This kingdom is, well, undoubtedly one of the smallest in the entire game, but it holds a few milestones. The first kingdom to only feature minigames for the kingdom's main power moons, your first confrontation with Bowser, plus your very first boss fight. The Lost Kingdom. This one, just like its predecessor, the Cloud Kingdom, is also very small and compact, but it is fun to explore nonetheless. It is also your first confrontation with Klepto, a giant bird thing that steals Cappy away from Mario, making platforming a bit more challenging now that you can't throw your hat in certain directions and makes for a pretty fun challenge. The Snow Kingdom. This one has to be one of the most interesting in the entire game. Like, yeah, we've already had hundreds of snow levels in past Mario games, but for some reason, the Snow Kingdom just feels like what all of those snow levels back in games like Super Mario Galaxy should have been. Take that, new Super Mario Brothers for the Wii! The Seaside Kingdom. Similar to its brother, the Lake Kingdom, the Seaside Kingdom features a lot of the same captures, but also introducing this lizard fish type thing, which allows you to get maximum airtime, being able to traverse either vertically or horizontally at crazy fast speeds for long amounts of time without having to refill your water somewhat often. The Luncheon Kingdom, same as the snow in the Metro Kingdoms, the Luncheon Kingdom is one of the most interesting in the whole game, revolving around a food type vibe that we've never seen in a Mario game, and also introduces being able to capture fireballs in Odyssey. Man, these things were a pain to handle with back in the new Super Mario Bros. series, and finally being able to control one is somewhat satisfying. The Ruin Kingdom. For those that want to feel like they're playing Dark Souls, then the Ruin Kingdom is just for you, introducing a mysterious and somewhat dark and eerie vibe. And considering that this is a Super Mario Bros. game, I could see why people didn't really like this kingdom at first glance, and to me, feels out of place in something that's Nintendo. 
Bowser's Kingdom, now this is a kingdom that I can roll with. As a lot of you may or may not already know, but in basically every past Mario game, Bowser uses a fiery lava lair for most of his hideouts, which again, are just a joke, but for some random reason, Nintendo just said screw it and they gave us a Japanese temple. I mean, it's perfectly fine, and I applaud Nintendo for stepping out of their comfort zone a little bit, but then again, this just feels out of place in something that's Super Mario, which is the exact reason that people adore this game so much is because it's a different take on Nintendo's way of making Mario. The Moon Kingdom. Now this kingdom is one of my favorites because it obviously takes inspiration from the game Super Mario Galaxy for the Nintendo Wii, which is undoubtedly my favorite game of all time, which I will in fact make a video on in the near future. Anyway, the Moon Kingdom is very fun to explore nonetheless. The low gravity really makes you feel like you're on the moon doing backflips and whatnot, but while the Moon Kingdom is a sure treat to look at, it is a bit like the Wooded Kingdom where it can get a bit eerie and can get on the boring side of things sometimes, but the final Bowser battle really makes up for that. What happens here is you have to go and enter the church on the far side of the Moon Kingdom, allowing you to activate a cutscene and endure the final Bowser battle, which is pretty awesome nonetheless, and you also get to listen to that epic battle music. The Mushroom Kingdom. This kingdom is the best kingdom in all of Super Mario Odyssey. Now look, you all are probably wondering why I don't think that the Metro Kingdom is the best kingdom, and I have my reasonings. First of all, the Mushroom Kingdom has the one thing that makes this, in my opinion, the best kingdom, is that you can actually purchase the original Super Mario 64 costume, and this is just so great because Super Mario 64 is undoubtedly one of my favorite Mario 3D platformers of all time, so this is just so obscure to see in the main game. Anyway, the Mushroom Kingdom is also where you'll be able to capture Yoshi, definitely one of the best captures in the entire game. Yoshi has so many interesting moves, such as flinging his tongue out to grab a wall, for example. You can also earn over 60 Power Moons in the Mushroom Kingdom by completing certain tasks for Toadette, such as jumping a certain amount of times, for example. That's pretty much it for this kingdom, besides doing some side challenges for some extra Power Moons. And finally, the Dark and the Darker Side. Now, I classify these two kingdoms to be exactly the same, but for good reason. The first Dark Side is basically a, a huge boss rush, where you have to fight all five Brutals and then take out the giant Brood robot at the very end all while you have no way of refilling your health. And yes, the game offers you one life up before the fifth and final boss. Like, seriously? But that's it, only one extra hit point. I find myself struggling the most with Stuart, because we are in anti-gravity, but whenever you jump, his poison is spammed all over the field, making it somewhat harder to find out where you're going to land next. And then the darker side. This is a secret kingdom similar to the perfect run in Mario Galaxy 2, or Champions Road in Mario 3D World. What basically happens here is you first have to fight Yufo, well, only if you want to, and then you have to go through some linear lava sections and a bunch of random stuff. But here's the thing, this is undoubtedly one of the hardest levels in the entire game, but the game is nice to you. See, at the beginning, if you do defeat Yufo, you, you can obtain a 3 life heart, which grants you 3 extra lives, and you can also get a 3 life heart by talking to the Sphinx, and there's surprisingly a whole lot of ways to refill your health along the way, so that makes the darker side somewhat easier to complete. Now, gameplay-wise, oh man, Mario Odyssey is like Mario 64, but on steroids. It is one of, if not the best controlled 3D Mario game in over 25 years. In addition to some of his existing moves, like the triple jump and the wall jump, Mario now has the ability to throw his cap, offering and allowing more ways to get to certain locations, and giving the player more of a choice when it comes to exploration. Some new additions to Super Mario Odyssey are the inclusion of purple coins, which are unique to every kingdom, allowing you to purchase the costumes that correlate to that specific kingdom. This also includes stickers, collectibles, and much more. This game also features a camera mode, which allows the player to freely take very cool selfies. This mechanic was also implemented into The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild as well. Putting aside the enhanced controls, DLC from Mario Odyssey was first introduced. Along with this came the Luigi's Balloon World minigame. This for one gives a nod to Nintendo, not only noticing 
guessing that Luigi still exists, but this game mode also introduces online play. Now this was a big step on Nintendo's end, Super Mario Odyssey was mainly meant to be a single player campaign. But considering the fact that Nintendo is adding online play to Mario Odyssey could hint at something bigger for the inevitable Super Mario Odyssey sequel. Later in an update on April 25th, 2019, Luigi's Balloon Roll became compatible with Nintendo Labo VR. In this mode, players can compete in certain challenges in kingdoms to recruit musicians' new instruments. I find the release of Super Mario Odyssey to be somewhat mysterious, as the Nintendo teased Mario Odyssey back in the year 2016 with the first look trailer at the Nintendo Switch. Super Mario Odyssey was then formally announced at the January 2017 presentation based around unveiling the Nintendo Switch. Then later that year at E3 2017, a quick demo of New Donk City was playable for attendees. The game was officially released worldwide on on October 27th, 2017, and alongside it came all new Amiibo figures, Mario, Peach, and Bowser wedding figures. Nintendo also released a limited edition Mario Odyssey Switch bundle that came with a console red colored Joy-Cons, a carrying case, and an eShop download code for the game. A little later down the line, Nintendo also partnered up with Kellogg's in December of 2017 to release a Super Mario Odyssey cereal box, which also functioned as an Amiibo. I find the plot of Super Mario Odyssey to be somewhat lame, I mean Bowser just doesn't feel threatening in this game, he kinda shows up when he shows up and not really anything to it. Anyway, the plot of this game is the same as always, Bowser kidnaps Peach and you have to play as Mario to rescue her. Like yeah, but this time around Bowser has a giant airship in which Peach is held captive. He also has Cappy's sister, Tiara, in his hands as well, so inevitably Cappy joins up with Mario to save them both. They travel across many different kingdoms, and while I do find the aspect of the adventure game to be very interesting, I just again don't feel threatened by Bowser, he just kind of feels like a joke at this time around and didn't put much effort into this kidnapping. Bowser takes Peach and Tiara to the Moon Kingdom, where he would finally wisen up and just marry Peach without her consent. I mean, I actually find this concept to be interesting. I mean seriously, Bowser just puts on some big boy pants and finally takes matters into his own hands even though it completely fails miserably in the end, but then again, I find this plot to be a lot more interesting than in past Mario games. And th that's basically it for Super Mario Od Odyssey. This is more than just a standard Mario game, it's an experience that you get to, to traverse worlds that people have been wanting from Nintendo for decades. Yeah.